Good afternoon and welcome to Northern California's most exciting yearly sporting event, the big game between the California Golden Bears and the Stanford Cardinals. This is Joe Starkey with Jan Hutchins. A beautiful day for football. Temperature in the low 60s, a bit of a breeze, and a full house, of course, at Memorial Stadium. Today, game number 85 in a series that began on March 19, 1892, and stands in favor of Stanford with 40 wins against 34 losses and 10 ties. So Dwight Garner will be the deep man for California with Moret Ford. Garner's on the far side. Moret Ford is on the near side of the field and of course the kicker as usual for Stanford is Mark Harmon and he's a good one he's a junior from Alexandria Virginia and he's ready for the kickoff from left to right sellout crowd at Berkeley's Memorial Stadium the 85th big game beautiful weather sunny skies 60 something degrees and here's the kickoff it comes down one yard into the field Moret Ford takes it coming straight back up the middle and he has dropped right at the 18 yard line on a fierce hard hitting tackle by Stanford, who on the road, of course, will be in white with red numerals and trim. Dwayne Hamilton, a backup safety man for Stanford, makes the stop. Let's give you that bare offensive lineup to begin with here. As they go out on the field, the center will, of course, be Pat Brady, the senior, 6'2", 245. The guards are Timmy Gallus and George Nealiku. The tackle is the big All-American candidate, Harvey Salem, on one side, Greg Loberg on the left side. In the backfield, Gail Gilbert is the quarterback. Ron Story will start out at fullback, and the Bears are using... Two receivers right now. Right and left is Wes Holland and Rhett Ford. The first handoff of the day goes to Ron Story. Straight over the middle for about three yards. And I thought Pat Mitchell probably tripped him up. The junior from Carmel, Indiana. The Bears' first drive of the day stalled deep in Stanford territory. The Bears settle for a 27-yard field goal try. They're going to put the ball at the 17-yard line. So it makes it a 27-yard attempt now for Cooper. It's on the far hash mark. Kick going from right to left. Cooper, soccer-style kicker, wearing number nine. The kick is up and partially blocked and goes wide to the left. So the Bears eat up almost six minutes of the first quarter, drive all the way downfield, but do not score as Stanford partially blocks the field goal try. Cardinal gets a lift from that and will take over first and ten. Now let's move to early in the second quarter, and Stanford has the ball in a scoreless tie. Elway rolling to his right. Wants to throw. Being forced back. In the and he's dropped at the three by Greg Beagle. Bagel tripped him up way back at the three-yard line. Stanford will have to kick from the end zone. A 16-yard loss on that play by Elway, who would have been wise to simply throw the ball up for grab somewhere. Good timing by Beagle. You, many times you've seen a, a player come close to a fella and then keep running with him and then be outrun. Well, that time he used the, the last moment he could dive at Elway and got him by the ankle. Trip Harden is barely a yard from the end line, and Moret Ford is at the 45 of Stanford. So the Bears have a full rush on beside. Ten men up on the line of scrimmage. They're going for it. High snap! Ball is kicked, though. And taken by Ford at the 42-yard line. Drops it again, and Azra has to go back and fall on it at the 45-yard line. Moret Ford drops it twice, and had to go back and get it. And then decided he better just lay there. <laughs> Dick Cushion would have loved to see him. He dribbled the ball pretty well there. <laughs> the third, 39 yard punt. Moret's so excited about breaking them now. He's beginning to develop a couple of bad habits on his punt returns, but he is, uh, he is such a threat. No score, second quarter, 13 29 remaining. Big game number 85. Stanford holds the axe. Gilbert rolls to his right, trips over the Astro turf, and is dropped back on his 46 yard line. Oh! On a dive through the air, tackle by Charlie Hutchings, I think, 46, I think it was, rather than Vaughn Williams. And had he not come in, and Gail Gilbert had just another moment to turn and look to his left, wide open down the left sidelines, Wes Howell, they had come in the blitz and missed Howell. Loss of nine on that play, second down and 19 to go. Wes Howell to the left, Moret Ford to the right, Story and Tuggle in the backfield, David Lewis the tight end to the right. Just three men up on the line of scrimmage this time for Stanford as they fake the blitz back off. Gilbert throws, has his receiver, complete to Moret Ford at the 39-yard line of Stanford. Short of the first down by still almost five yards. Gail Gilbert getting up a little slowly, testing his left knee, and now tripping back to the huddle. Kevin Baird, the tackler on that play, that was good for 14 yards. Simple down and out, Moret Ford ran again. The uh, Cardinal came with the blitz from the middle. Make that a 13-yard gain on the play. No score, second quarter, 12 minutes remain. West Howell to the left. 
Buggle and Story in the backfield. David Lewis lines up as a receiver to the right. About two steps outside of Danny Mosley, who lines up as tight end. Hand off to Tuggle. Jumps over a tackler. Goes inside the 40, down to the 37-yard line. The Bears are still three yards short. Aaron Beer is on the tackle. And also um, getting up his base. Kevin Bates on the tackle. Well, since the Stanford defensive backfield was so bad last year, in fact, they uh, only made six interceptions all last year. They have 22 to be tied for the lead in the conference this year. I think the Bears' uh, game plan is to run on crucial situations. They've done it twice so far. Here they were third down in about eight, and they run the ball. So Gail Gilbert with a fourth and three at the 37-yard line of Stanford puts Lewis in motion. Gilbert rolling to his left, throws across the middle. He's Lewis at the 20. He's out of the 19-yard line. It's a first and 10 for California. Nice tackle on the play by Hutchings. But it's the first down for the Bears. High formation, Story ahead of Tuggle. Hand off to John, over right guard, puts his head down, tries to knock some people out of the way, and goes to maybe the 13, maybe the 12, no more than that. So not much of a pickup there, only a yard or two. And still well short of the first down by some three or four yards. About three yards. Balls at the 12, third and three. Got to get to about the nine and a half for a first down. No score, second quarter. Tuggle right, Story left in the backfield. Lewis, the tight end, lines up left. Wes Howell to the right, Brett Ford to the left. Five-man front for Stanford. Story takes the handoff, drop behind the line of scrimmage. Big tackle that time. Nice play by Wyman. Mike Wyman, a backup defensive tackle from Reno. His brother's on the team, uh, team, Dave Wyman. And he made the tackle there that forces the Bears to settle for another field goal try. The first one was blocked. I watched Harvey Salem on that play. It wasn't his fault. He took his man clear to the sideline. <laughs> so Joe Cooper will go for a 31-yarder. The ball will be kicked from the 21. Greg Beagle is the holder. Greg Loberg is the snapper. And Stanford's already blocked one. Snap, kick, up, long, and good. So California is the first team on the scoreboard this afternoon. 3.26 remaining here in the second quarter. Timeout on the field to score. California 3, Stanford nothing. It's now late in the second quarter, and Stanford has the ball, still trailing 3 to nothing. It's third and 12 at the 28. Elway brings them up. Bears put seven men on the line of scrimmage. They've got all, they got three defensive backs up. Now they drop off. Elway back to throw. Camp is coming at him. He runs away. Starts to scramble and is hit and dropped to the 28-yard line by Richard Rogers. He fell forward to the 29. Sikowski really putting the pressure on. And so Elway again, absolutely vexed and harassed by the Bear defense. This is similar to the rude way the Bears treated sophomore John Elway when he came up here two years ago. Trip Harden punting again. I believe this is his fourth of the day already. Yes, it is. Brett Ford at his 35-yard line. Bears are going from left to right here in the second quarter, leading three to nothing. Three minutes ago, very high snap. Just gets the kick away. He's hit on the play. The official started to pull out. His flag did not, and it appears that perhaps that the Bears actually got a piece of the ball. Because the ball uh, Timmy went Lucas. off his foot to the 45-yard line, Jim. Yeah, Timmy Lucas either got a piece of the ball or, uh, yeah, he must have gotten a piece of the ball because he certainly did hit hard. Only a 26-yard punt because the punter was hit and the official started to go for his pocket, but I guess he felt that they got enough of the ball or did get something of the ball, and so that makes it a legitimate uh, punt block, and the Bears get good field position first and 10 at their own 45. Gilbert straight back to throw. Tuggle protecting. Loberg protecting. Right over the middle. Has a receiver. What a catch by Brett Ford at the 29-yard line. Spectacular. Falling backwards. Net. First and 10, California. 16-yard game. Ford and Lewis ran right in one another's trail. 15 yards downfield. Lewis cut to the inside. Ford to the outside. Beautifully thrown by Gilbert. 26-yard gain is at 16. Add the extra 10 from behind the 50. So it's 26 yards for the Bears on that one first and 10 of the 29-yard line. Three to nothing, California second quarter. Gilbert back to throw. Here comes the rush. Waves it upstairs. Correct four to the end zone. He caught it. That's a great catch. Yes, what a bonanza. The catch of the air. Correct four to spectacular. Diving. End zone. Touchdown catch. Maybe 
the finest I have ever seen in a big game. Unbelievable catch. The extra point try by Cooper is good. Timeout on the field, 2.42 to go until half. The score, California 10, Sanford nothing. Cal went into the locker room at halftime with that 10 to nothing lead. And they have the ball now early in the third quarter. Third and four at the 48. Gilbert sets up quickly. Throws in the left flat. He's got Moret Ford out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Complete. And the Bears have themselves another first down with a pickup of some five yards. Gilmore making the tackle, and Moret Ford has had a day he will never forget already. Gilmore seems to be set up for the uh, down, out, and down. He was up real close that time, and Gilbert had to throw it even further into the flat than he would have liked. And uh, perhaps he's now ready to fight on the fake and uh, be beaten deep. Brett Ford, six catches, 94 yards, and one of the finest touchdown receptions we've ever seen. Story in the backfield for California. Gilbert back to throw. Looks downfield. Going for the bomb. Ford is out there. He caught it again. At the nine-yard line. Over Kevin Baird with a sensational catch. Oh, my goodness. A 36-yard pass. What a show by Moret Ford from Northgate High School in Walnut Creek. He's one of my neighbors. His family lives just a couple of blocks away, and we're very proud of him in that neighborhood, I'll tell you that. Moret Ford, small, but so quick, the game breaker, the fellow that many coaches, as you talk to them about facing the Cal Bears, say is the player they fear the most because he is their big play man. First and goal at the nine for the Bears, leading 10 to nothing. This could be a tremendously important score. High formation, Story and Tuggle in the eye. Five-man front for Stanford. Gilbert pitches back to Tuggle, sweeps to his left, and is stopped at the 10. May have lost a yard on the play. Good hitting by Stanford. Great work by Terry Jackson and Rod Gilmore to come in and head him off. And a lot of credit has to be given to Garen Ferris, who was in on that tackle also. He's playing in big pain. He was hurt early in the first half. He's got the bad knee, and Philly's out there. Southmore, who's going to be a big star. Remember, Moret's younger brother, Oren, will be back next year, too. He's been hurt, and he's got that kind of speed and sensational ball playing ability. So it's second and goal at the 10-yard line. Gilbert fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. He's in trouble. He's going to have to eat the ball and is dropped back at the 15-yard line. Stanford rising to the occasion. Sensational work by Vaughn Williams, their free safety. What a player, their number one tackler on the year. Just as we pointed out so many times already today that the uh, Cal defense had picked the right defense to stop John Elway that time, Gail Gilbert rolled right into the blitz and had no place to go. Six yard loss on the play. Kevin Baird works on Wes Howell. Gilmore takes Moret Ford. Bears have to get to the end zone or settle for a field goal try. I formation story and Tuggle. Gilbert fakes the handoff. Gilbert, in trouble again, rolls to his right, looks into the end zone. Moret Ford can't get there. Moret Ford was rolling to his right. The ball was thrown behind him. He tried to come back. He could not. Gilbert was throwing off balance and couldn't aim it quite the way he wanted it and also had to keep it away from Rod Gilmore, who was covering on the play, so Gilbert couldn't pinpoint it. Pass incomplete. Field goal try coming up here by Joe Cooper. And it'll be 33 yards. 10 to nothing, California. Near hash mark, right to left. 33-yard try. They blocked one today. Here's the kick. Line drive bad. Missed wide to the left. And Stanford hangs uh, tight in this game. They stay close. Bears have had a chance now to really get some daylight in this game, but have failed to convert with a blocked field goal, a missed field goal. Both when they had a first and goal inside the 10, they've had to settle for field goal tries. They did make one. First drive of the game is the same story when they went way downfield after a long march and came up empty. 9.31 to go in the third quarter, and Stanford gets new life. Stanford, sensing an opportunity to get back in the game, started a drive that put them at the Cal 47. First and 10, 47-yard line of California. 
Dotterer lines up at the halfback spot. Hooper the fullback behind Elway. Elway to throw. And he gets it to Mullins, completed the 37-yard line. Mullins lined up on the left, slanted in. And the tackle made by Ahmad Anderson. But complete. Absolutely brilliantly thrown ball. No place else he could have thrown it. He had to throw it low. It was perfectly thrown. Official timeout to measure because they're right at the first down mark. One touchdown by Stanford changes the whole tone of this afternoon. I'll guarantee you that. It'll uh, maybe open this game very wide. Must be something. 22 years old, already a legend. John Elway. Some people are even saying he's the greatest quarterback of all time. They say that Stanford is short by an inch or two of a first down. Clock starts to run again. Lots of time. Eight minutes to go. Third quarter. Emil Harry out to the left. Mike Tolliver to the right. Cooper in the eye ahead of Dotterer. Elway hands off to Dotterer, and he has the first down. Didn't need very much and got not very much, but enough, about a yard. Maybe to the 36, maybe the 37, we'll see. Richard Rogers, the tackler. Also the inside of the line. Camp and Sikowski there as well. But it's a first down, and the ball is at the 36-yard line of California. 10 to nothing Bears third quarter. Emil Harry to the left. Mullins to the right. Gressel lines up as a tight end to the right. Elway is checking off. Has split backs. Dotterer and Hooper. Elway to throw. A quick pass that's good for a couple of yards to the 29 yard line. In fact more than that. Down to the 29. Sullivan right on Mullins but a bullet pass thrown right into the chest of Eric Mullins. A seven yard pickup. Elway's decided the only way to uh, beat the Blitz is the same way they tried to attack Arizona State when they uh, threw their vaunted Blitz at them, and that's throw, step up, throw real quickly to the wideouts and hope one of them can break it. Second and three, 29-yard line. Najarian in at a linebacker spot for California with Eddie Walsh. Elway hands off, and it goes to the second man through the hole, and it's the back man, uh, Dotterer, who was tripped up in a hurry by Richard Rogers. Yeah, Rogers hit him real hard low. Dotter is playing with a bad shoulder. In fact, he had considered not even playing this season because his shoulder was bothering him so much. He didn't want to take a chance on ruining his prospects for a baseball career, but uh, he's going to put off the surgery until after this season, and as it turns out, he's done quite well leading the team in rushing. Byron Smith in there for the Bears as they put four men up on the line of scrimmage. And here's a big play here, third down and two at the 28-yard line of California. Elway pitches back to Vincent White, turns the corner, goes to the 26. He's got the first down. Forced out of bounds by Freddie Williams. But Stanford with its best drive of the day working right now. And they're going into the Stanford end of the field where they're going to get lots of noisy support. High fives all around in the Stanford huddle as they come back. They're beginning to feel the emotion. They say John Elway exudes a cool, calm confidence in the huddle. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. That's the first uh, third down conversion, we believe, that Stanford's made. Elway to throw, puts it upstairs, has a receiver, and catching it out of bounds is Tolliver. Ahmad Anderson was all over him, and Tolliver's unhappy. He thinks there should be some pass interference there somewhere. But he will not get that call, and Stanford will come up second and 10 of the 25. Elway had to throw the ball uh, further to the outside than Tolliver had originally intended, and he came back and made a nice play to catch the ball but apparently the official says he was out of bounds 10 to nothing score six minutes to go third quarter final game of the year for Cal and Stanford big game number 85 separated by just a dozen or so points over all those games Hooper left Vincent White to the right Elway straight back to throw being chased by Jimmy Stewart gets it away has his receiver White he may go he's in the 10 he's down to the 5 and dropped to the 3 yard line It'll be first and goal for Stanford. Eddie Walsh finally caught up with him. But the Bears need a goal line stand to keep Stanford off the board here. Elway rolled out to his right to avoid the blitz that was coming from the back side and then found White short on in the flat on the right. He picked out two guys and then got it down inside the two. So a pickup of some 23 yards on the play. Elway getting hot now. 14 out of 20, 145 yards. First and goal at the two-yard line. Wide split back. Dotterer to the right. Vincent White to the left. Elway to throw. He's got a man all alone. Vincent White. Touchdown, Stanford. And now 
we've got our typical big game. It'll be 10, perhaps to 7, with almost 20 minutes remaining. By the way, on that drive, John Elway reached a personal milestone. He hadn't thrown for 3,000 yards since his junior year in high school. He really wanted to do it while he was at Stanford, and on that drive, he just went over 3,000 yards for the year. Extra point try coming up by Mark Harmon. Game now separated only by perhaps a field goal. A great drive by Stanford. And the Bears may yet rue the fact that they failed to score on two long drives into Stanford territory because now with 5.29 to go in the third quarter, timeout on the field to score. California 10, Stanford 7. Now trailing only 10 to 7, the fired up Cardinal defense stops Cal quickly and forces a Mike R punt. Vincent White at his 25 yard line. What a talent White is. Just a tremendous player. Last week, not only is a great running back, 14 receptions in the game against UCLA, tying the Stanford school record. And of course, I think he's had the most exciting play of the year for Stanford. That was the 62-yard punt return against Washington three weeks ago. Mike Ayers punt, high lazy kick. Vincent White, a fair catch at the 27. Stanford starts out there, trailing 10 to seven in the third quarter. They stop at any one of the 32 San Francisco federal offices and ask about their money market checking account. Three investment plans to choose from. 33-yard punt. Vincent White had quite a, quite, quite a day in last year's big game with uh, 13 uh, rushes, 77 yards, five catches, two touchdowns, and one of them was that 22-yarder where he made everybody on the Bear team miss as he went in for the score. Hooper in the backfield with Vincent White. Hand off right up the middle to Hooper, and he fell forward for maybe three yards of the 30-yard line. Gary Plumber, the tackler, senior from Fremont. What a player he's been for two years for California after coming over from Maloney Junior College. Well, they, they always call him an overachiever because at 6'2", 230, they say he's too small to play that position. But he's smart, he's heady, he's aggressive, and he's made it work for him. And uh, nobody's been able to take that job away from him. Second and seven, 29-yard line. Shotgun for Elway. Snap a little bit high, but he's got it. Wants the throw, has an open man, the tight end, Dressel. He's at the 42 and dropped at the 45-yard line. Chris Dressel, the senior from Placentia, all alone, lining up a tight end to the left, who was wide open for that catch. Rivera tackling it with Kevin Moan, the fine safety man, senior for the Bears, will be leaving. Moan was uh, obviously worried about deep threat. He was playing the uh, wide receiver who was on the fly on that side of the field, and then Dressel was able to hook up and be wide open. 15 yard gain, three minutes to go, third quarter. Bears still leading, but Elway beginning to roll. Elway throws, has his receiver, Tolliver. He's got it at the 45 yard line of California. John Sullivan on the coverage, and Elway, though, getting that bullet pass right on the money. They're running the down-in pattern. The, the Bear linebackers, they're using the linebackers a lot to try and come and pressure Elway. And uh, what's happening is he's taking advantage of that opening over the middle. They'll measure and see if they got the first down on that one. They didn't. They didn't miss by much. By the way, today's game is being brought to you in part by Kuppenheimer Factory Stores, where you buy fine men's clothing direct from the manufacturer and save with four locations to serve you. Elway at 7 out of 9 in the first half. I should say in the second half, of course. Seven out of nine in the second half, so he's really heating up. So they got the first down, trailing 10 to seven. Mullins goes out to the left, Harry to the right, picked up by John Sullivan. Cooper, the full back, half back to his right is Dotterer. Elway inside handoff to Hooper. Hooper tries to spin over left guard and picked up two yards. Freddie Williams was right there to make the tackle, the senior from Chowchilla. He hits so hard and so well that they've even used him in effective linebacker during the season. Great young man. He's uh, one of the peer advisors trying to help out some of the other players, and he also is preparing for a career in athletic administration. He wants to go to law or business school. Second and eight at the 43. Vincent White to the right, Dottero to the left in the backfield. Elway to throw, Bears with a heavy rush. He gets it away, he's got his receiver, Vincent White! He's down the sideline, he may go! 10, 5, touchdown, Packers! Cardinal has the lead! Great block by Mike Oliver. 43 yards on a short pass in 
the right flat. He had only one man that could get a shot at him, and he left Siegel hanging, went down the sideline into the end zone, and the Cardinal have come roaring back in the second half to take the lead. Tolliver held his block against Sullivan for a full three or four seconds, sealing him off and allowing uh, White to run right down the sideline to get his eighth career big game touchdown. What a player, Vincent White. Here's the extra point try by Harmon. Snaps a little bit high, kick is up. It's good. Timeout on the field. 1.42 to go in the third quarter. Stanford has the lead. 14, California 10. California now trailing for the first time in the game. Takes the kickoff and marches to the Stanford 43. 43 yard line, first and 10 California, 14 yard gain. Tuggle back in there with Story. And going left and sweeping left, trying to get and turn the corner is Tuggle, but he doesn't do it. He stopped after a pickup of four, maybe five yards. We'll see where they say he went out of bounds. In fact, I'll give him at the most four on that one. At the ball is at the 39-yard line. Now Gary Wimmer and Soderlund forcing him out. Again, the Bears attacking that one weak spot on the uh, Stanford defensive line to the Stanford's right defensive end. Tuggle with 83 yards on the afternoon, so a shot at a 100-yard day. Second and six at the 39. Tuggle and Story in the backfield. David Lewis lining up as a receiver to the left. Cross buck handoff to Story. Good call. He's down to the 30, down to the 20, 15, 10, out of bounds at the 10 yard line. Beautiful cross buck misdirection play. Story angling for the sideline, toward the goal line. Couldn't get there. Hutchins and Baird had too much speed for him. But the Bears will have a first and 10 just outside the 10 yard line. And Story has only five carries, but 64 yards. And Ron is just a young sophomore. He says his goal in life is to become the all time leading career rusher for the California Bears. 30 yard pickup on the play, about 30 yards. Rance McDougall in there now. He's out to the left. And off goes the Tuggle, sweeps to the right, falls forward down to the three yard line. Good blocking by Neil Liku and Brady out there. So the Bears will have a first and goal inside the four-yard line. Gilbert wants to throw, and they drop him. Back at the 12-yard line. Tremendous pressure. Stanford defense gave him no time at all. Garen Barris. And Garen Barris, Jan, does it again. Big hit, big play. And uh, it's unfortunate David Lewis, right as Gilbert was going down, was coming wide open across the middle in the end zone. Loss of eight yards on the play. Back out to the 12. They have to get to the one for a first down. And now a lot of pressure on because they don't want to have to settle for a field goal when you're down by four points. Tuggle and Story in the backfield. Gilbert rolls left again. They're in on him across the middle. And it's broken up in the last second. But there's a flag on the play. The pass was to Wes Howell cutting in on a post pattern. The ball was batted down, but there was a flag on the play. Charles Hutchings and David Lewis were over in the left corner. We'll see if somebody's guilty of pushing either offensively or defensively. Officials are huddling. Bears offense staying on the field. No decision yet. Bears had an ineligible receiver downfield. And so therefore, that'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, they can take the penalty, make it fourth down, make the field goal harder to make. Now they get it both ways on that one. So it's fourth down. The Bears will have to send in the kicking team. And Cooper has had a very sporadic afternoon. He badly hit one. He had another one blocked and has made one. So he's only one out of three. Bears down by four points with 13.32 to go. This one will come from the 25-yard line. So make it a 35-yard Field goal attempt straight out. Snap, kick, up, and good. 35-yard kick by Cooper is good. 13-28 remain in the game. The score, Stanford 14, California 13. Cal defense holds Stanford deep in its own end of the field, forcing a cardinal punt. So the Bears might have the ball as close as the 40-yard line or so with any kind of an average kick and any kind of a decent return at all by Marette Ford. Here's the snap and the kick. It's short. They got the return on. But the ball gets a Stanford roll and drops dead at the 
two-yard line of California. The ball was very short, but it was not straight. It went out toward the near sideline. So Moret had to back up and get away from the ball. Had to watch it roll. And so California, nonetheless, though, starts out in excellent field position, but a good kick, a 44-yarder. And we have 12-24 to go in a one-point big game. Moret poured out to the left. And Stanford, by the way, is leading, in case you just tuned in in that one-point differential. Tuggle and Story. Gilbert rolls left. Upstairs to David Lewis, completed the 45, down to the 40. He's got a block, he's to the 30. He's down to the 22-yard line, drops the ball, but the play was dead. He'll mark it at the 21. David Lewis, one of the finest tight ends in the country, maybe without any doubt the best in the Pac-10, although there'll be arguments, I'm sure, from other schools. But he's having a sensational year. He came into this game as the number two receiver in the Pac-10. And that one was good for 37 yards. Bears at the 21-yard line, first and 10 with 12 minutes to go. Danny Mosley comes in. Lewis stays in as a receiver, and Mosley goes in at tight end. Tuggle and Story in the backfield. On the far hash mark, going from left to right in the fourth quarter. Hand off to Tuggle, the short side of the field. Surprising call, down to the 19, and we got a holding call right now against the Bears. That's the way it looks to me. Jackson making the tackle along with Kevin Bates. Right. Well, that is the wrong time for a Bear to make that mistake. Especially on a running play like that, Joe, there's no real reason to try and hold a fella. Bears have already been penalized five times for 55 yards. That one really hurts, and as Jan says, it just makes no sense at all on a running play. This doesn't add up. So a big mistake, perhaps, by California, dropping them already in very questionable field goal range. So it's first and 20 at the 32-yard line. Bears want to at least move down another 10 or 15 yards, give Cooper an, uh, an honest shot at it here. 11.36 to go. Stanford leading by one. Brett Ford to the right, Story and Tuggle in the backfield, Gilbert to throw, goes upstairs for the bomb, receiver is out there, it's caught a touchdown, oh my goodness, what a bonanza, if you thought the direct board catch was great, this one was better, a one-handed catch by Wes Howe, diving into the end zone. Well, I never thought I'd see a catch like Ford's once in a game. We have now seen perhaps the two finest catches ever in a big game right here. Up there was Steve Sweeney's remarkable grab in 72. And this one, West Howell down the left sideline. Again, a pass that seemed to be too far. And Howell reached out one-handed on the sideline of the end zone, caught it one-handed, brought it down, then fell out of bounds. The official called a touchdown. The Bears have the lead 19 to 14, and this has been one that they'll have to write a whole new book about. A mirror image of the Moret Ford catch just on the opposite side of the same end zone. And <laughs> Joe, is this what we did the whole season for to get ready to be able to handle all this emotion? Oh my goodness. What a play. What a play. And Gilbert is 17 out of 27, 302 yards. This has all the markings of a classic, I'll say. It's already had I'm weak. <laughs> two plays. No Cal fan, particularly, will ever forget these two receptions. Oh, my goodness. Get the videotape machines out and get ready to record this one, folks, when you watch the highlights with Barry tomorrow, uh, wherever they are in your area, Barry Tompkins, because this has been something. And the Bears are going for two points. They lead it 19 to 14. They see no advantage to 20 to 14. Ball at the three-yard line. Story and Tuggle in the backfield. Faking the handoff. Gilbert rolls right. Wants to throw into the end zone. There appeared to be interference, but David Lewis was blocked off the play by Hutchins, and it's simply called an incomplete pass. But with 11.24 to go, California now back in the lead. California 19, Stanford 14. We'll be back after this timeout. Stanford, now trailing by five, begins a long drive. And with seven minutes to play, the Cardinals have the ball at their own 40. Elway now, listen to this, Jan, is 20 out of 29, but his yardage has not been that dramatic yet. Only 217. 
That's not bad, but <laughs> for most guys. Elway looking for another 300-yard day yet, maybe. Inside handoff, Vincent White cuts outside, breaks the tackle, he's in midfield, he may go the distance, out of bounds at the 30, he has great speed, but Clement Williams had the angle on him and forced him out of bounds at the 30. Got a flag. And a penalty he against California. So the play holds up. Elway stood back waiting for the official to tell him what it was with nervous apprehension written all over him and cheered lustily when he found out it was against Cal. A 29-yard gain. Stanford's in the, in the position in the field now where they can do just about anything they want. Elway's got enough room for let his receivers work. Tough position for the Bear defense. 7-19 to play. First and 10 at the 30. California 19, Stanford 14. Elway with Dotterer and Hooper in the backfield left and right. Emil Harry out to the left, Mullins to the right. Elway falls down for the second time today on the snap. It appears just like last time, he seemed to trip over his center's foot. And that's the effect of Gary Plummer playing so close onto the ball that he gets off just as the uh, center makes the snap and actually gets the center backwards far enough that he probably is taking a step backwards and catching Elway's foot there. He lost three yards by falling backwards. He'll go into the shotgun on second and 13. John to throw, giving ground. Way upstairs, has an open man at the 12. It is complete to the 10 yard line to Tolliver. It'll be first and goal for Stanford. Sullivan was not as close on him as you would expect. Tolliver had room to make the catch. Stanford has a first and goal after a 24 yard pass. Reggie Camp broke a tackle and then got to the backfield. He was real close to Elway. No, no hold called. Elway had plenty of time to float the ball up then to uh, Tolliver. Shades of 79, shades of 80. Two games settled by defensive stands by California in the closing minutes. Can they do it here? Leading by five. High formation. Elway gives it to Joe Dotterer and he goes to the nine yard line. Freddie Williams came in fast with some help from Byron Smith and they made the tackle. Hitting him in the backfield, Dotterer had enough strength to get back to the line of scrimmage, but they hit him three yards deep in the backfield. Well, here's the big stand maybe of the year for California. Only six minutes to go. It is second and goal at the nine yard line. Stanford must get into the end zone. They might not get the ball back if they don't score a touchdown here. Look out for Vincent White on the flare. Dotterer to the right, Vincent White to the left, Tolliver the receiver to the left, Elway to throw, Bears are coming, out in the left flat to Vincent White, thrown over his head, but there's a penalty flag on the play. Let's see what the call is. White took quite a shot, he's going to come off and take a break. There seems to be a possibility of holding against California, defensive holding. The pass was thrown very quickly, which could have an impact on why the hold was called. Oh yes, defensive holding against the Bears. What a critical time for that one. They're calling it on Ahmad Anderson as he was trying to hold up his receiver when the big blitz was coming as all the Bears were up the middle. The wide outs have to try and hold their man up and not let them beat him on a quick, uh, quick in or a quick uh, up. Well, that is a killer for the Bears. That really hurts them. They would have had a third down and Stanford would be down to two plays to get that touchdown. Now, a whole new ball game. First and goal at the five-yard line. No, excuse me. No, that's a, it was not uh, defensive. It would not be that case. They will have a second down and be at the five-yard line. My apologies. So they've got three downs to go five yards. Elway brings the team up. Bears have everybody on the line of scrimmage. Elway wants to throw. Rolls to his left. Looking for the end zone, he throws it away because there was nobody open. Freddie Williams, Ahmad Anderson, John Sullivan, Gary Plummer were all back there. Clement Williams and the ball went in the stands. He threw it so hard. And Elway is really reacting to that pressure. He sprinted out of there in a hot hurry, trying to get away from the uh, rush from the inside. Did momentarily, but then found no one to throw to. As the Bears began to approach him, he decided he better get rid of it. Nobody who saw the 1979 big game will ever forget Ron Coach Emilio making the big play in a similar situation against Elway. Here we go, third and five. Bears peel off just a touch now, trying to confuse Elway. He's going to throw again. Bears are right in, he lost it toward the end zone! No good! Dropped at the corner of the end zone by tremendous pressure from John Sullivan. 
The man was there to catch the ball. Emil Harry, Sullivan wouldn't let him. Byron Smith was on Elway like a flash, forcing him to put it up a little quicker than he wanted. And on fourth down, maybe, maybe they'll kick this. It's fourth and goal at the five. Only five and a half minutes remaining. Harmon has come in to kick. Will he? We'll see. I'm not convinced. Everyone held their breath because Harry had that ball in his hands momentarily, never had possession, and then John Sullivan mugged him as he tried to come down with it. Mark Harmon, 12 out of 18 on field goals. This one virtually an extra point. Snap, kick is up. It is good. He hits it. It is a 22-yarder. And with five and a half minutes remaining in the 85th big game, action as usual. California 19, Stanford 17 will take a timeout. After forcing a punt, Stanford began a potential game-winning drive that had put them at the California 33-yard line. 2.39 remaining, second and eight, 33-yard line. Elway to throw, and he has dropped. The ball comes loose. They'll call it a fumble. They'll call it a fumble, and the Bears have the ball. Reggie Camp was the key man, along with Clement Williams on the blitz. The first turnover of the game. The Bears have the ball in the lead with 2.32 to go. Win or lose, no matter who wins this one, with the great games of the past, I guarantee you. Tuggle and Story in the backfield. David Lewis doesn't seem to know the play off to the left, and so Gilbert's checking off. Here's Story trying to find some room to get that first down and he threads his way out to the 46-yard line. They're a yard short of the first down, and Stanford is asked to time out. We'll hold it right here. 143 remaining. Dave Moronic and Dave Wyman making the tackle. Third and two for the Bears at their 45-yard line. A first down would bury Stanford. If they don't get it, they're still alive. Hand off to Tuggle. Tries to sweep outside. He does not get the first down. He does not get it. 94 seconds remaining. R will kick from the 30-yard line. Bears lead it by two points, 19 to 17. And Elway capable of the quick striking play, obviously. R with lots of time, and he hits a beauty! He hits his best of the day! And it goes all the way into the end zone. Mike R coming through in probably his final kick as a collegiate player. It's hugged and cheered and grabbed and thrilled it up by what he did on that one as his teammates mob him on the sideline, a 55-yarder. 87 seconds to go, Stanford's got to get within range for a field goal, and they have one timeout left. So what do you do if you're the Bears? You continue to put pressure on and force one-on-one -on -one coverage with your cornerbacks, or do you play back with the nickel? Hooper and White in the backfield. John Elway at quarterback, Rodgers comes up on the line of scrimmage, a safety man. Elway back to throw, lays it on the flat to Vincent White, he falls down! White fell down to the 12-yard line, lost eight yards. Freddie Williams came pounding in. Elway let it go quickly to White, he fell down as he started to go upfield. No huddle for Stanford. Stanford has only one timeout left, so they don't use it here. No huddle, a minute five to go. They're back at their 12-yard line. Elway back to throw. Reggie Camp can't get him. Pass over the middle. Almost intercepted by Gary Plummer. It was intended for Vincent White. Plummer stepped in front of him, had the ball bounce off his hands. What the Bears have been doing all day is allowing defensive backs or linebackers to blitz and allowing Plummer to play the middle and try and contain so Elway, one, can't run, and two, he can help out on those little short passes over the middle. It paid off right there. What a great game today. Big game number 85. 58 seconds to go, third and 17. Elway, though, capable of the big one, always. Rodgers drops off this time. So does Eddie Walsh. Elway back at his three. Throws. Pass broken up on a dramatic diving play by Richard Rodgers, who jumped in front of a meal, Harry, to knock it down. And the Cal fans, who, of course, dominate here, not by a giant margin by any means, because the ticket's available to both teams, but they are going crazy. They still have one more try, Joe. It's a fourth and 17 on their own 13-yard line. The Bears Obviously. better not celebrate too soon. Obviously, there will be no punt. There's no way they would even think about it. But here's the game, fourth and 17, back at the 13-yard line. Bears start to peel off. 
Elway back to throw inside his five. He's got to get this one. Looks way downfield. He got it. And it's completed the 42-yard line. He did it. Jimmy Stewart and Clement Williams making the tackle. Stanford racing the clock with 45 seconds and one timeout left. What a quarterback, John Elway. What a play. Clock running. 40 seconds to go. This one's beginning to look like Mike Langford in 74. Elway puts it up. He's got it. Caught at the 39-yard line. Out of bounds. There's a possibility that that play will not count. Wait a minute. There's a possibility the receiver came back in from out of bounds. At least that's the way we saw it. Yeah, it's no good. No, the play counts. Play counts. So it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And I thought he came in from out of bounds to catch the ball, but nobody called that. So with 31 seconds to go, they still have that timeout left but still need to get a little further downfield. Here's Elway bringing him up. Pitch back. Breaking to his left is Dotterer. Dotterer may go all the way. He is dropped at the 17-yard line. He swept to his left on a beautiful play. Anderson and Rodgers make the tackle, but Stanford is now in position to win with a field goal. Oh, my goodness, what a finish. Clock has 23 seconds remaining, and they still have their timeout left. Clock begins to run again. It's down to 18. Let's see what Elway does. Pitch back. Gives it to Dotterer. Sweeps to his right. He's dropped at the 18-yard line. And now, with eight seconds to go, Kevin Moan makes the tackle. Stanford calls the timeout and sets themselves up to win the game with a field goal of 35 yards. What a finish. I'll tell you, this is something. And for John Elway to pull this out after being fourth and 17 on his own 13-yard line with less than a minute to go is one of the most remarkable finishes you'll ever see. Harmon's a great picker. This is a gimme for Harmon from the 35, a 35-yard kick, eight seconds to go. Mark Harmon, 35-yard kick will win it. Listen to the crowd. Here's the snap. Here's the kick. It is long enough. It is good. Stanford hits it with four seconds to go and takes the lead, 20 to 19. Only a miracle can save the Bears as Stanford piles out on the field. Now there will be a 15-yard penalty against Stanford on the kickoff. Or exuberance is about what it comes down to. The big game. Awesome. Flow of emotions back and forth. Great football. Well, this is some show, I'll tell you. And now, the Bears in a seemingly impossible situation. They have only one timeout left. They pretty well have to run it back to save the game, and boy, Talk about a heartbreaking way to lose. But what a great way to win if you are a Stanford fan. Eight seconds to go, 35-yard kick by Harmon. It'll go right up there with Langford's kick in 74, which was further, of course, a 50-yarder at the buzzer. The Bears' problem is that although the kickoff will now come from the 25-yard line, it's unlikely that Ford can get the ball and get out of bounds far enough upfield to set up one try at the field goal. What a recovery by Stanford. You have to give them all sorts of credit. Fourth and 17 at their own 13-yard line to defeat Steriman in the face, and they saved it. They pulled it out. What a show. All right, here we go with the kickoff. Harmon will probably try to squib it, and he does. Ball comes loose, and the Bears have to get out of bounds. Rodgers along the sideline, another one. They're still in deep trouble at midfield. They tried to do a couple of... The ball is still loose as they get it to Rodgers. They give it back now to the 30. They're down to the 20. 
All the band is out on the field. He's going to go into the end zone. He's going into the end zone. Will it count? The Bears have scored, but the bands are out on the field. There were flags all over the place. Wait and see what happens. We don't know who won the game. There are flags on the field. We have to see whether or not the flags are against Stanford or Cal. The Bears may have made some illegal laterals. It could be that it won't count. The Bears, believe it or not, took it all the way into the end zone. If the penalty is against Stanford, California would win the game. If it is not, the game is over and Stanford has won. We've heard no decision yet. Everybody's milling around on the field. And the Bears, the Bears have won. The Bears have won. Oh, my God. The most amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rending, exciting, thrilling finish in the history of college football. California has won the big game over Stanford. Oh, excuse me for my voice, but I have never, never seen anything like it in the history of I've ever seen any game in my life. The Bears have won it. There will be no extra point. Hold it right here. Don't anybody go away. 26 Cone scores it. After just about everybody on the kickoff team handled the ball, Kevin Moan finally did it, and he ran through 15 members of the Stanford band. Nobody tackled it. The Foles. <laughs> Glenn Shapiro, our statistician, has just held up a card, and it says the truth. The Stanford band just cost their team that ball game. The Stanford band ran out on the field. It left all the defenders in an impossible situation to get to the Bears carrying the ball. They couldn't tackle them. The band, in effect, served as extra blockers. The official had no choice but to let the play go as was. The Bears have scored on the kickoff, brought it all the way back. At least five men handled the ball on one lateral after another. I thought Rodgers was dead at one point. He got rid of the ball. I believe it was Kevin Moan, as Jan said, that scored the winning touchdown as the kickoff came from the 25-yard line. This place is like it has never been ever. Stanford can't believe it. The field is covered with people. Stanford is standing around in a daze. The band is in the corner, don't know what to do. Blue and gold is all over the field, jumping in joy. 25 to 20 is the final score. The University of California has won the 85th big game. The only thing we're not sure of, Jan, is we'd like to credit the Stanford tuba player who threw the key block on the ground. <laughs> we will be back, believe it or not, if we can compose ourselves right after this with a recap of today's unbelievable game. On KGO, News Talk Radio 81. Welcome back to Berserkly. It is indescribable here. The field is absolutely overwhelmed with Cal fans. The Stanford band is beside themselves with disappointment. They can't believe what happened to them, in effect, because they were on the field before the play ended, but they thought the play was over. They, in effect, blocked and allowed Kevin Moan to score the winning touchdown. To recap it from the top, I know we got crazy because it was an hysterical scene. There were so many laterals, so many times it appeared that the Bears were finished, that the ball was simply being stopped cold that it was impossible to even follow who had the ball because the Bears, when they finally got down into Stanford territory, had the problem of having to run through the Stanford band. We literally couldn't see who had the ball or who was running with it. I guarantee you, if you watch college football for the rest of your life, you will never again see or hear a game to match this one for pure dramatic excitement in the most spectacular, <laughs> crazy, amazing remarkable games I have ever seen it you cannot like believe the sight here at Berkeley as the axe is now being carried the axe is now being carried around the field by the Bears Rich Dixon I believe has got his hands on it Rich Dixon's got it in his hands it looks like uh, trying to pick out some of the other players down there Jan but again we should point out it's Kevin Moan if it is not sound like a credible broadcast of the final play my apologies but believe me, we didn't know how to call it till it was over either. I don't want to apologize. It was just so wonderful to be a part of this event today. And down at the end, it looked like the old blue rugby team, the old blues that have been the national champions year after year, had put that play in because at least six or seven different Bears 
touch the ball as they lateraled it. All good legal laterals moving downfield before Moan finally ran through the Stanford band into history. I don't think a single person in the entire sellout crowd has walked outside the confines of the stadium yet, even to go underneath the stands and party some more. The field is indescribable yet. It is so packed, so full, that the players for California trying to go around the field, carrying the big axe, which they have won back as they finish their season seven and four, have had to have a path, have, need a path cleared for them to walk around the stadium. And what is more dramatic than anything is the overwhelming movement, action, and excitement of blue and gold against the Red Sea down to our right that is stunned into absolute silence. They are virtually immobile. I have not seen a member of the Stanford band so much as move in the past three minutes. They are just now beginning to try to get some semblance of sanity back into their lives as they reflect on the fact that they, in a way, helped the California Golden Bears win the 85th big game here today by a score of 25 to 20. Once again, from here in Berkeley, where the serenading and the songs and the music and the parties will go on late into the night as people, years from now, a million of them will say where they were here today for what has to be, as of this moment, the greatest big game in history. The California Golden Bears win it. Once again, the final score, California 25, Stanford 20.